Great. I am, well, I, yes, I am. <laughs> um, okay, so um, I'm going to talk about the use I've used of a tool that has been available in the institution for about a year called um, Talis Elevate, which is different to Talis Aspire, the normal kind of reading list system that the library promotes as a means of sharing readings, digitizing readings, um, those kind of things. Um, and I'll explain what Talis Elevate is as, as I go through the lecture. Um, so I'm going to talk about my experience of using it last year, sort of, and include a little bit of what I did this year as well. So it's a, a third year module, it's a small intervention really. Last year there were about 20 students on it, this year there are just over 40 students doing the module. It's my own kind of research-led module, so it focuses on my own research specialism. Um, and really, it, what I wanted to do was to experiment with using, using a tool that would develop students' reading skills, really. Um, something that I don't think we often focus on very much, the, that we expect students to do a lot of reading, but we don't really think about how they do it or how we can kind of cultivate better reading skills amongst them. Linked to that, I also wanted to develop their skills in questioning, and I think as I go through the talk, what I had more success in is the reading and less in terms of uh, the questioning. So there are three bits of the talk. I'm going to talk about what I aimed to achieve, the activity, so what I asked the students to actually do, uh, and then there's a bit of analysis. I gathered a bit of feedback from the students, um, and then um, right at the end of the talk, I want to talk a bit about what I what I think they actually do when they're using Talis Elevate, the types of comments they add, and what that might tell us about the types of learning they might be doing. So as I said, there were, there were sort of three, three broad things I wanted to do. Encourage students to think more critically about what they were reading, particularly to think about asking more questions. Um, yeah, asking questions. I wanted to get more insight into how they interacted with the readings that they were doing and use that to inform what I did with them in the class. So because Talis Elevate um, enables me to see what they're doing when they're reading, to, to some degree, it means I can tailor what's going on in the class a bit more to what I think they're interested in or what I think they've misunderstood. Uh, alongside that, because they were working on it together, um, the idea was that they would kind of create a shared bank of knowledge, a shared bank of questions and comments that they could all go back to later on in the module. So that was one of the other um, kind, of, kind of things underpinning it. Um, and re actually, really what was underpinning it all, which has been a problem that has faced me ever since I started teaching, which is probably about 15 years ago as a, as a sort of PhD student, um, which was, why don't the students do the reading? How do I get the students to engage with the reading, really? And I used to think, that the problem was that students didn't do the reading. And obviously there are some who don't ever do the reading and there are some who always do the reading, but there's a vast number of students, I think, in the middle who do the reading but don't necessarily think about it. And part of the point of this activity was to get them to do it actively, to encourage them to think about what they were reading while they were reading about it and to process, to do some cognitive processing of what they were reading uh, by adding just a few comments. So that's what I was trying to achieve. Um, the way I encouraged them to do this was not just to set up a Talis Elevate site, and you can see a kind of screenshot of what a Talis Elevate site looks like. It simply looks like a PDF viewer, um, which is online, and which students can annotate. So the different colours pertain to the different students who are adding comments to the reading as, as they work their way through it. That's all I was asking them to do. Each week I asked each student to post between two and three comments on the weekly readings. They highlighted a bit of text and added a comment. I asked them to think about things like st stuff they found interesting. I asked them to pose questions that it raised for them. So they, that might be misunderstandings, that might be stuff that, you know, just, just thoughts that it raised for them. Uh, and I was trying to get them to en encourage them to, as we went through the module, to think about how the materials and how the different weeks of the module link to each other. So to kind of get more of a, an overarching idea of the module rather than seeing each of the readings as discrete. Um, okay, then 
I tried to use that, I would read through the, the comments each week and use that to some degree to structure what we did in the seminar that week. So I would be able to pick out things that I thought they'd found particularly interesting, to pick out things I thought they'd got wrong or misunderstood so I could kind of deal with that. And as I said, one of the aims was to create a centralized bank of stuff that they could all go back to when they're doing their assessments later on. So all of the students can access this, I can access it. Um, I think it's also important to note that they can take private notes too. So we, I know um, from the, the people at TALIS who are developing this, I can't see what private notes they're taking, but the TALIS people tell me that the, some of the students are taking many more private notes than they're sharing with the rest of the group. So they are using it as a kind of, to create their own uh, kind of note, note taking system. Uh, I guess the f two more things. One is um, it's assessed, so they have participation marks on the module. Um, and 10% is actually wrong, it's 15% of the grade goes on their participation in class. And what TALIS Elevate allowed me to do, allows me to do, is to reward their participation outside of class as well. So it enables me to see a bit more those dynamics that are hidden, that actually some students do a lot of work, a lot of reading. They're willing to share their comments outside of class, but they don't want to share them in class. So it helped me to square that circle a little bit. Um, I think the other thing that I haven't written on here is I would read all the comments, I would encourage them by doing sort of blackboard announcements and talking to them in class about it, but I've never written a comment myself on here. I don't get involved. I think it links to that co the discussion that we had about the two presentations ago about whether you occupy the space or whether you leave the space to the students. And in this case, I left it to the students to, to, to do what they wanted in. Okay, so, um, these two graphs show when the students participated in, in, on a, kind of in total on a weekly basis and across the course of the semester by week. Um, so by week and within week. Now, if I had a poll everywhere here, what I'd ask you to do is guess which day the class was on. Would you guess? Would you have guessed Thursday? So it allows you to do interesting little things like start to see where, what point in the week students. So it's got some quite good analytic tools behind it too. So you can see when the students are, um, are engaging, when they're sort of not, not, they're working other modules or doing other stuff. It's measuring total minutes of reading when, when they're in the doc, like the whole cohort. Um, they can, they know that it's collecting some data because they can see that they've got, they can see their own data. They're allowed. Yeah, yeah. And I wonder if their approach would be different if they knew that's what that was telling you. Yeah, yeah, that's interesting. Yeah, if I sort of foregrounded that to them. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, of course. And the balance in their time. And the, the, the most important thing is that they're doing the work. The fact that they're doing it just in time. Like Doesn't really, yeah. Smart. Yeah, we can see it also by semester, guess where the, the first essay was due in. <laughs> um, so again, you can, you, it allows you to do interesting things with, with um, comparing it. There are just some stats about most of the students, I think all of the students engage with it at least once. Obviously some of them engage with it a lot, some of them engage with it a bit. Most of them engage with it a medium amount, which is presumably what they do with anything at all that we present them with in terms of educational technology or Indeed, any learning activity really. There's there's going to be a range of engagement. Um, yeah. 
Yeah, I mean, I, I, I haven't, it's a very small number of students and we have a very, I think, we have a very um, homogenous cohort, so it's that, but that it might be more interesting this year because we've got, I've got 40 students doing it, so I might be able to kind of break it down a bit more. I know those are the sort of things that Talis are interested in finding out about its particular, whether it helps or hinders particular demographics in, in these types of things. Yeah. I'm presuming these are just the shared comments rather than the private comments. So this, the numbers that I've put on here are the ones I can see. Yeah. The, I think the total, the, the sort of what students are reading and stuff is, the graph is their total amount of engagement in terms of what they're doing on their own as well as what they're doing in the publicly kind of thing. Yeah, yeah. 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 So I tried to sort of. Int I mean, in this year it's been different because some students have gone absolutely crazy with sharing lots of public comments, and it kind of swamps. It can swamp everything else a bit. So I've been kind of encouraging them to keep it to them, share, use that for your own note taking and share your best ones really. Um, okay, so that was the sort of engagement that we got. Um, I gathered some feedback from the students via a survey. One of them voluntarily mentioned it on the module evaluations. They mentioned stuff like, it helps discussion seminars because we've, we've got an idea about what we're collectively interested in beforehand. It enables them to sort of explain things to one another, was another perspective. Um, what, what's interesting here is one of them says it feels safer, less awkward than posing a question in front of people to do it digitally in front of people, which, which I think is, is an interesting comment. Um, it makes it easier to open a discussion and highlight bits you're not particularly um, sort of sure about. Um, and that idea that it, basing the seminars around the comments really helped. Um, it helps people to see what, what like that there are common issues, that there, there, are, there are common things that they're struggling with and that they can help each other with. Okay, so what I wanted to do, I wanted, because I've sort of presented all that stuff before, I wanted to do something new um, in preparation for this. And what I tried to do is to think about the types of comments that students ask, um, post, and what, I, sort of like what that might tell us about the types of learning that they might be doing through this process. Um, so I've kind of done, this is totally heuristic, it's just from me looking through the list and my impression of what they do. I haven't added up the numbers. But my sense is that more common types of, of questions are simply saying, this is what this says. The comment is like, this is what this is. Or, and analysing that sometimes, this implies or this means something. So kind of taking it to the next level. Quite frequently students pose questions, but sometimes that, they'll be very closed questions that are about um, a very specific question, about something they haven't understood. Sometimes it'll be much more kind of open and it'll be about opening out the discussion. Oh, this makes me think about this, isn't, kind of isn't this interesting, why don't we think, sort of like opening out the discussion. Um, one of the discussions I've had with the people at Talis is they don't think that my students do discussion. And I, I'm not sure because I think the students don't very often do direct discussion. They don't kind of add a comment, then a response, and sort of go through like a kind of reply, chain of replies. But what they do is cluster a load of comments around the same block of text and I, so I've kind of dis described that as sort of like in, indirectly discussing something. They're not talking to each other openly, but they are sort of talking about the same stuff in the same space. So I, I, I found that very interesting to think about it that way. Um, it's relatively frequent that they mention other readings in the module or other weeks or other topics. Sometimes they talk about random stuff they've done on other modules even. 
Uh, much less common are some people seem to play, some, a couple of students play a game of sort of, um, I'm going to define a couple of really easy things at the start and that's my two comments. So I'd be like, this word means this and this word means that, like slightly technical terms and then they don't post anything else. So sort of posting information. Very occasionally they'll correct each other. Um, and that's usually done by students who are actually friends with each other, who I know know each other in class, so they feel more comfortable with that. Uh, occasionally they'll answer the questions that the other students have posed or make an attempt to answer it or clarify it somehow. That's relative, that's not uncommon. Um, very little direct discussion replying to each other's comments. That might be because of the way that the reply function appears or works, I'm not sure. Uh, and sometimes they do stuff like link to other resources by putting in a URL or adding a bibliographic reference or something like that. Um, so that, that idea of building up a type of resource bank. Anyway, so I think there are, I found it very, very useful in terms of getting students to, active, to actively do the reading, to tie together what they do outside of the class with what we try and do inside the class. Um, and as I dig more into it, the, the, the question that you asked really about the different types of things that are going on there are, are really varied. I think different students are learning in different ways and are, are practicing different sorts of skills when they do this. Um, I think it's got a lot of potential uh, sort of affordances that I don't realise. I think in other disciplines it could do lo lots of different things that aren't really appropriate to history. I think it's a very flexible tool. Um, and whatever discipline we do, we want the students to read, I think, at least something. And that it, it, it's very, very good, I think, at, at encouraging to, to read more in more varied ways and in, in enabling us to see how they're reading and helping them to improve their reading. That's the end of my presentation. If anyone's got any questions, just fire away. I'm a historian, so I'm in, I'm in history. Yeah. So, so people do read, which is... The students do read. <laughs> it's very text heavy, particularly at the third year level where, where it's more specialized. Um, so I think, I think the way I've done it would work particularly well for history or English or, or any discipline really where, or any module where you're asking them to do relatively large amounts of reading. Yeah, but what I've, what I've also done over the years is actually give them, reduce the number of pages that they have to read, but try and focus them on quality. So getting them to do tasks, to engage with it, to think up questions, this just supports that even more. And, and you do see it, if I, the couple of times I've uploaded like a 40 page PDF or something, they still will do page 20, you'll start getting a big dip in the, in the amount that they're actually, and then by the 30th page nobody's posting anything. Um, I wonder if it actually encourages more reading of actually like not computer science might say uh, reading is not the prime skill I would say most of our students possess. <laughs> so yeah. I am still looking at good ways to engage them more to actually read some stuff I'm not sure if it Definitely, it really helps. So you, you know, they'll, they're all reading the same thing. So a student who's talkative will say something, and then I can say, yeah, and so and so had said something about that on the on the Talis or Elevate reading list. So you can, it really does allow you to draw people in a bit more, and and just to, um, I think, possibly give them a bit more confidence. You can say, actually, that was that's a good thing. I've chosen the thing that you posted as something that we're gonna we're going to discuss. I mean, I wouldn't kind of target them, pick on them necessarily, but I would kind of say, okay, 
you know, you've helped to make design this seminar, whereas what I used to do is kind of going with a much more rigid plan of what we're going to work through, and now I have to sort of figure it out the day or the day before a bit more. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I I still haven't figured that out fully yet. I think we I need to refine how to do it. I used it really as a way of compensating those students who don't say very much in class for the contributions that they're obvious that I can see that they're making outside of class. So still most of the participation mark I award for what they're doing in, in the classroom because that's the thing we have actually have more of a we've got a rubric for that whereas for what goes on in the more broadly in terms of participation I, I, I try to factor that in because we part of the rubric is having prepared having you know coming with prep, prep, prepared materials and blah, blah, blah. they've definitely done that because I can see um, yeah, so I use it as a way of kind of augmenting what I, what I award them for what's going on in the class, really. And I, yeah, last year what I did was I kind of weighted it sort of two thirds for what they did in the class and a third for what they did outside of the class. Um, and kind of worked out, did the maths. Um. Okay, uh, just a question. Have you seen any impact on student performance? Well, um, so I don't know because I was on. I did this first semester last year. Then I was on research leave, so I didn't see any of those students again. And it was the first year that I'd run the module, um, so I basically designed this in as part of the module design. So I don't have anything to compare it to in terms of this specific module. But I th whether or not their marks are better, I feel like they're more. They're definitely more engaged in class and more of them are participating definitely in class than would normally happen. So I feel like in terms of the having a positive environment within the class, it's definitely had a positive impact. Um, whether it's, I mean, I think what we need, what we're, gonna, what we're considering is his, in history is like rolling it out to other modules, whether we think about a way of structuring it more broadly, because I don't think one module is gonna transform their reading skills Necessarily, but hopefully it helps um, a bit. Yeah. Yeah. I think it's it's really interesting actually narrowing making them think about something very specific actually in some ways encourages them to then come back out and broaden out rather than always operating in this kind of general, oh, well, the source is kind of about this sort of topic, but you, you don't get that. This really makes them pick up on a specific thing and, exp you know, and engage with it, um, which I think many of them struggle with. Um. Okay, well, thank you, Jamie. Thank you for the last presentation. Thank you.